everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to be making a cake that I've only, up until this point, admired from the comfort and safety of my couch. And that is the Mirror Glaze Cake. They are super mesmerizing to watch. I see them all over like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it doesn't matter. I just watch them, I'm like, ooh, I need to eat it, but also make it. So what I decided to do was go on YouTube and find the most viewed Mirror Glaze Cake and that happened to actually be a fellow YouTuber, Rosanna Pensino. And I've watched it through one and oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Also, if you don't know, you need to go and subscribe to her because she is the most adorable human ever. This video has 20 million views. There's a lot of humans. But I decided to see if I could follow her recipe and create my very own mirror glaze cake, having never made one before. <laughs> Wish me luck. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos every single Saturday. And without further ado, let's get into this. So I've created my own little like setup station here with all the same ingredients that she has done as well. I tried to get as close to, if not exact replicas because I wanted to like follow the recipe as closely as possible. No mistakes possible. So I already have my little my little cakes already done. It's from a box, I'm not gonna lie to you. So that's all done. That was a process. The first thing she did was level the cakes, which we all know is my specialty. And it seems by the end of it, she doesn't have four layers. She actually has three layers. So the first thing I'm gonna do is level off the top of both of the cakes so that they're nice and like even layers, <laughs> hopefully. And then I'm just gonna saw this one, which is a little bit thicker in half. So I end up with the same number of layers as she does. I've never used this before, so this will be interesting. Oh my gosh, did I do it? Yes! Look at that, I feel like a pro. Literal stage one, Rachel. Oh, look at that. Such a professional. Is it bad that I just wanna eat it like this? Like a cookie? Okay, Ro, what's next? Okay, now we're gonna ice it. Oh, excited. My little piece for frosting. Have our little turntable here. I learned very quickly that I did not have a lot of elements for baking cakes properly. So I'm gonna put a little frosting right in the center. Boop, this guy right smack dab on top so he doesn't move around. And then I'm gonna cover this layer with icing. Oh no, it's coming off the top. There we go. It's not as cute as Rosanna's, but you know what's gonna work. Does she spin it while she ices it? I don't know if I'm that talented yet. Oh no, she just goes around. Okay, let's try this again. All right, <laughs> we have to do a lot of smoothing here, but you know what? I got the icing on. So much icing all over me. It's oddly very soothing. I am quite enjoying this. Mine seems a little bit lower on this side, so I'm gonna add some more icing to like this part here. Just trying to make it even, you know? And then for the last layer, she said to turn it over so the bottom of the cake is on top, like so. And then we need to let this chill for about 20 minutes in the fridge until all of the icing is kind of like set, so. <laughs> BRB. Okay, we're back. It has been about 20 minutes and now we're going on to icing the rest of the cake. And what it looks like she's doing is she gets the top of it first, then she does the sides up and down, and then we get into the, the spatula mastery that um, I'm a little scared of. I also changed the, 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 the piping thing to a round one. I am already messing this up. How does Rosanna make this look so easy and I make it look like my three-year-old has done it. All right, gotta do a refill on icing because they didn't actually say in the recipe how much icing to prepare, uh, so I ran out. I've always wondered how long it would take someone who's like actually going to, you know, school for this, not, not someone who's just trying to get by right now. But like, how long does it take you to actually learn how to do this speedily? Because I see this on like, the Food Network, wow, I'm struggling right now. But I see people like Ro, like people on the Food Network, and they just do this and it's like and it's just, it's done. But I see some of you in the comments that are saying that you're um, bakers for a living, or you are in culinary school. By the way, also really appreciate all of your comments, like very constructive, helpful, encouraging. You're all very nice people. Ah, <laughs> dropping icing all over the floor. Don't let me step in that. No, I'm probably gonna step in it. I feel like my piping tip was way too small for this. Okay, now let's clean that up. All right, now that we have the icing all over the cake, look at that. Now we have to smooth it out and I need to watch this part again. Okay, she takes this, the offset spatula. Give me, I'm learning. Okay, she puts it on an angle and she spins the cake around. Okay, okay, let's start with that part. Don't move. The angle, Rachel. Ah! No idea what it looks like yet. You're all gonna see it before me. She said, if it doesn't look cute the first time, just go around again. 
So I'm gonna do that. It's not great. That's not terrible either. So then she smooths over the top and she pushes all of the icing out to the side, which I am currently attempting to do. But I must focus. Oh no! Don't lift up the spatula, everyone. Only bad things happen. How come mine does not look as smooth as hers? Then she takes all of the icing on the side and she scoops it up with the end, like the tip of her spatula. I mean, it's a cute, rustic looking cake. Hang on. Okay, I think I got it to like an okay place. The trick for me as someone who doesn't do this often or ever is I ran this under some hot water and used that and it really helped with the consistency of the icing, just kind of smooth everything out and just made it a little bit more malleable and easier to work with. No, Rachel, don't touch it. She might've had a different consistency for her icing, which is why it looked, it looked almost like nice and like fluffy, um, which is not the icing that I ended up with. So that might've just been the difference, which is why I needed to heat up the um, spatula. But now I am going to go and let this chill for two hours as per her recommendation and then we'll We'll get on to the next step. So while the cake is chilling, we're gonna go on to creating that mirror glaze that is going to give that really pretty effect and I'm very excited to pour it all over my cake. That is going to be the best part. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a half a cup of cold water, this is in the fridge, I'm gonna pour that into a separate bowl because dirtying as many bowls and spoons is very important in the process of cooking. And then I'm gonna take my gelatin, pour that into the cold water and stir it around until she says it looks like applesauce. So I'm gonna look for that. So it looks like next we are combining some stuff to go onto the stove and that is some more water, some light cornstarch. Oh, it's so go bite. And some sugar. And I'm gonna go and put this on the stove until all of the sugar dissolves. I also stirred it when it was over here. Just as a heads up, that is an important step. Must stir it. It is now dissolved. I feel like I'm crushing this. So now I'm gonna add in the bloomed gelatin. Ooh, like solid now. And now that that is sort of like dissolved now, I'm going to add in some sweetened condensed milk. Pour that in. Oh, that looks so good. And now that this is all whisked together, I have my little bits of chocolate here. And she was more specific about the type of chocolate. I guess there are some types of white chocolate that this doesn't work very well for. So I tried to get some good stuff. And I'm just gonna pour this hot mixture over top of the chocolate to melt it. She recommended getting Kovacher chocolate, so that is the one that I ended up getting because I want this to be as close to hers as possible. All right, this has been chilling for about three minutes or so, so now we are going to take the little hand blender and uh, we're gonna blend it all up because apparently this is the best way to get the like smoothest consistency for the chocolate. Oh, that looks amazing. I'm gonna take my strainer and I'm going to strain the mixture to get out any lumps, bubbles, that kind of thing. I want this to look like a mirror so badly. Okay, now it looks like we're going to split it up into five different bowls for the five different colors to create the like galaxy appearance. All right, bowls have been divided. For the colors, I tried to pick up the colors that were like as close as possible to what she had. So in the big bowl, we're gonna do a little bit of blue and a little bit of black. In the other big one, we are going to do just blue. And then for the three small ones, we are doing a purple, pink, and a very light blue. I feel like I need a baby spoon for these. There we go. Then we're just going to stir them all up. Okay, now I have the two colors that I want. I have the cake in front of me. I'm getting really nervous, guys. I'm gonna take the bright blue and I'm going to pour it into the dark blue and kind of swirl it together to give it that galaxy kind of illusion. Really gentle. Okay, it's pouring time. We're just gonna lift it up and I'm just going to pour it all over the cake. Oh. <sighs> Guys, ooh, that looks kind of cool. <gasps> it's very dark, but I do have my other little colors here, so I'll put those in too. I'm just gonna do some streaks. Purple. Oh, I should have made it a little bit lighter. I mean, it's fine, but like, that'd be my one thing. And then just a little bit of pink, which when you think about it, feels a little weird, because like, why is there pink? But then you see it on Rosanna's cake and you're like, oh yeah, no, that is definitely needed. And I'm just gonna take the spatula and I'm gonna go across it really, really gentle. 
And the spatula is also, uh, <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to concentrate. It's also, I heated it up a little bit just so it would like go across a little easier. Am I ruining this? I feel like I might be ruining this. And then she took a little bit of like a black glitter and flecked it on and she used a paintbrush. I'm using barbecue brush, but you know, it's close enough, right? And she just went like this to get like glitter going on it. Not enough glitter. More glitter. I don't see it. Oh, mine's not looking like yours. Oh, that's better. I went a little bit closer. Then I have some white paint to create the illusion of stars. Or not at all. Oh, maybe a little bit. Oh, oh, I'm doing it. Ha oh, ha ha, cool. It's not great, but I like it. I am proud of myself. This is what it looks like from the top, guys. Is it mirrored? I don't know, it's, it's shiny. It looks more striped than like galaxy, but you know what? It was not bad for a first try. Oh, oh. Okay, now we're gonna try this cake. Do people like this? Oh, it's like melted gummy worms on a cake. No, thank you. The mirror cake I have decided is very good to look at. It tastes horrible. If you guys have ever done one of these mirror glaze cakes before, send me pictures on Twitter and Instagram. I want to see if you guys have created one before. Thank you, Rosanna, for the inspiration. Go and check out her video, guys, because hers is like 10 million times better than mine. Give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below if there are any other recipes that you guys want me to try. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Love you all. Mwah.